So welcome to this week's video, and this week I want to take on a buzzword, or buzz phrase, that's been in the newspapers quite a bit, if you read the financial pages, and that is smart beta. So a couple of people have already emailed and said, Tim, what is smart beta? There it is. It's an exciting sounding piece of city jargon. So what's it all about? Now, first thing I should say is there are a couple of videos out there which I'd urge you to have a quick look at either before or after this one. One is called What is Alpha? And the other is called What is Beta? All right, I'll be covering that very quickly in this video. Smart Beta fits somewhere in the middle. So what is Smart Beta? Well, in essence, this is a fund management type term. What people are doing at the moment is they're challenging whether you want to be an active investor or a passive investor. Do you pay a fund manager to run a fund for you and do stock selection and stock picking and all that clever stuff? Or do you put your money into a passive fund, which will be cheaper and just usually tracks some kind of index or some kind of sector or basket of shares? So the you know, stock picking is much less active, transaction costs are much lower, fees are lower too. All right? Well, there's the debate. And Smart Beta fits right into that debate. Okay? So you tend to get two sorts of people in, in, in fund management and people who buy funds. Some like um, what's called active fund management. And active fund management is where you get the term alpha. Okay? This is the idea that I should pay a fund manager if I want to beat the market to choose stocks for me. And they will add value for me. They will add that mysterious thing called alpha. If you're thinking, well, I haven't really explained it, do take a look at my other video, what is alpha, okay? So active fund managers charge higher fees in return. They try, try and offer higher returns. Now, over the passive side of things, if you like, in, in fund management and uh, fund picking terms, you have, that's a box, by the way, you have passive funds. So that's a computer, let's call it, simple computer program, strip it right down, all right? And all that really offers you is what you might call beta, all right? So in other words, you can make a cheap fund. You don't need a fund manager. You don't need all the long lunches and the games of golf and the meetings, okay? What you can do is just program a computer to affect a really simple stock picking strategy, okay? And what it might do is simply pick um, most of the stocks in a big index, not all of them, but most of the stocks in a big index like the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500. So it'll become an S&P 500 tracker or a FTSE 100 tracker, okay? And it just literally sort of sits there um, with a basket of stocks selected by a computer. Um, and that's called a passive. And it's a beta style of investment management. Uh, in other words, you know, beta, and if you look at my video, what is beta? really is about someone saying, well, all I'm going to give you, all I'm really going to give you is the return of the market by sort of passively following it, all right? Whereas over here, you have a fund manager saying, no, I can do better than that. I can do better than just tracking a broad index. I can beat it and offer value that way, offer you alpha. Now, smart beta, if you like, is a sort of intelligent computer, all right? So a smart beta strategy would be a computer fabulous graphics I know, with a brain, all right? That's where smart beta sort of fits in. So this has come about because what's happened is this, okay? People have got fed up with paying uh, for active fund management in some cases. They've said, well, we've had the, the credit crisis, we have the stock markets falling, what am I paying for? Okay, what am I paying for? And there have been various studies done saying that over time, an awful lot of fund managers don't even sort of managed to uh, match the performance of the market, let alone beat it. So there's been a move, I wouldn't say a, a sort of stampede, but there's been a big move into passive style funds, cheaper, lower costs and so on, exchange traded funds, passive unit trusts and investment trusts. So there's been a bit of a move over here. So an attempt to fight back, if you like, um, you could see it this way. The fund management industry is sort of saying, well, actually, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have the low cost of a passive fund, but with the kind of brains almost of an active fund. Okay, so we're going to try and give you the best of both worlds. Now, whether they succeed or not is another matter. But they're calling that, in industry jargon, smart beta. You'll see quite a bit of stuff being written about it right now. Okay, and the theory, it basically is this. 
Um, if all you do, if all you do is track a broad index, and there's been research on this from CAS Business School recently, okay, or Shaughnessy Asset Management wrote a paper recently, that's Osam. All right, um, there have been papers recently saying that if you just literally track the market, common sense dictates you're going to be doing something that most investors shouldn't in order to make money. Because when you track the market, what are you actually tracking? If the market's defined as an index, like the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500, those are market capitalization driven, a term I deal with in another video. Essentially, the companies in that index are chosen and reselected according to how big they are. All right, now if you think about it, market capitalization, size, is a function partly of share price, and the other bit is number of shares issued. So if your passive tracker is simply picking companies on the basis of how big they are, part of which is how high the share price is, surely what's happening is you're buying companies that are expensive by being in the index and selling companies that are cheap. Because if they've got a weedy share price, they'll be booted out. Wait a minute, isn't that the exact opposite? of what a profitable strategy should be all about. Shouldn't you be buying the cheap companies and selling the expensive ones? The so critics of pure passive fund management say, well, you know, beta strategies are useless because uh, you'll get, you might get some gain out of them. I mean, the market does tend to rise over time, all right? But you can do better, okay, without paying the fees associated with alpha active fund management. So give me an example. What would a smart, just one for this video, what would a smart beta strategy sort of look like? Okay, well, um, there is a product out there, I'm not advertising it as such, but there is a product out there, it's called the PowerShares FTSE RAFI, R-A-F-I, uh, that's ticker US dot dot PRF for anyone who's interested, and that chooses US stocks, it's a smart beta exchange traded fund, according to four criteria, book value, sales, dividends, and cash flow. Okay, so it tries to, it tries to basically build uh, a sort of index of stocks without just slavishly going for market capitalization based selection. All right? And that's an example of a smart beta. Now, does it work? Well, it depends on what period you look at. But over the last uh, five years, in return for a fee of 0.43%, cheaper than an active fund, but more than some passive ETFs, I have to say, but in return for paying that 0.43%, it's just an example, it's up. Um, on average, 1.8% per annum over the last five years, more than the S&P 500. All right, so you've, you've probably done a little shy of 2% better on average per year for the last five years from being here than there. But that is just the last five years, I should stress. Okay, so um, there are people around, in summary, who say, well, fund management used to be about offering you active or passive fund management cheap, doesn't always give you the best returns. Expensive doesn't always give you the best returns either. All right, so smart beta is a little bit of jargon, okay? And I have some, some sympathy with it, a little bit of jargon, saying that actually we can do this with a twist. We can do this, but be a bit more clever about the stock selection, okay? My one caveat would be this. If you are a fan of pure uh, passive investing index following, and there are plenty of people out there who quite like that idea, be aware that you will obviously pay more for smart beta than plain old vanilla beta. But in fairness, that tends to be the way life goes in fund management.